We're now on to our third lesson of chapter 7, and it's section 7.5 in your book. And this one, same title as the last one with one small change. Solving systems of linear equations using elimination. Same title last time, except we used graphing the first lesson, and then we used substitution the second lesson. Graphing was we graph one line, graph the other, find where they meet. Substitution was where you substitute the value of one var variable into the other equation. And elimination is as it sounds. We're going to eliminate a piece. So first, when we will use each. Solving by substitution is typically used when one of the variables has a 1 coefficient. Coefficient is just a number in front of a variable. So if one of them is a 1x plus 3y equals 7, then that 1x, that's the one we get alone to substitute. Solving by elimination, today's topic, is typically used when none of the variables have a coefficient of 1. If it was 2x plus 3y equals 7, and 5x plus 2y equals 8, none of the x's and y's have a 1 on it, so that is typically when we would use elimination. So our steps. Step 1 is the only real one that um, is really different from the others. I guess the second one a little bit too. But number 1, make sure one of the variables in the equation, so either the x or the y, have the same coefficient for either both of the x's or both of the y's. So to eliminate, you need a 2x and a 2x, or a 5x and a 5x, or a 7x and a negative 7x. That coefficient has to be the same. Or the y's could be the same. You'd have 3y's and 3y's. If they aren't the same, then you must multiply the entire equation or equations to get, the same, to get them the same. So if one was 2x and one was 3x, 2 and 3 have a common multiple of 6, you could multiply the whole equations to get the same coefficients. Step 2, this is the eliminate step. Add or subtract, and only one of them will work, and we'll get to that when we get to an example, one of the equations from the other to eliminate, it's elimination, a variable. After that, it's the same steps as substitution. Solve, and then finally when you get an answer, put that answer back into one of the original equations to get your final answer. Uh, I guess learning intentions for this one, the only learning intention is learn to use elimination for solving systems. Okay, so let's get right to an example. Solve this system. So we have two lines, that's what makes this system. They're linear equations because the variables just have powers of 1. So 3a plus 2b equals 5, and 2a plus 3b equals 0. So step 1 said we needed either the a's to have the same number or the b's. So the a's are 3 and 2, the b's are 2 and 3. So neither are the same. If they were the same, we'd draw a line under it and start doing our elimination step. Because they're not the same, we need to get them the same. So it doesn't matter which we use, let's just do the a's because they're first. 2 and 3 have a common multiple of 6, so if I times row 1 by 2, and I times row 2, or equation 2 by 3, I will end up getting 6 a's for both of these. So remember, what the common mistake is to forget to multiply each piece. You need to multiply each term. So 2 times 3a is 6a, 2 times 2b is 4b, 2 times 5 is 10. So I've done each piece. Now the second row by 3. 2a times 3 is 6a. 3b times 3 is 9b. 3 times 0 is 0. So what I've done now is I now have coefficients that are the same for my a's. So that is step 1 done. Step two is the elimination step. Draw a line under it. And now you're going to add or subtract to eliminate. If you're writing the notes down, skip this part for one second. If I chose to add 6a and 6a is 12a, 4b and 9b is 13b's, 10 and 0 is 10, nothing eliminated. So I know adding was not correct. The way to know what to do, I guess, is if the symbols are the same, these are both positive, then you need to subtract. If they're both negative, subtract. If they were different, like a positive and a negative, then we would add. So I'm going to subtract, and this is my step two, this is my elimination step. 6a minus 6a means I have no a's. 4b minus 9b is minus 5b. 10 minus 0 is 10. So that is step two complete, if you go back and look at the steps. Now, step three was solve this. 
I have one variable now, and you can solve when there's one variable. So I need to get this b alone. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5, and I get b equals negative 2. So that is step 3 complete. I solved. But remember, if you go back to graphing, solving is where the two lines meet. Or solving is finding what value of a and what value of b do we need to put into this to make it equal 5. And at the same time, make this a and b equal 0. So I know that b needs to be negative 2. The final step is put our value of b into either equation. I'm going to put the b into this equation just because it's easier to draw an arrow to that one. So if the negative 2 replaces this b, I get 2a. The b is becoming negative 2. So now solve. 2a, 3 times the negative 2 is negative 6. I want my 6 on the other side, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides. I want 2 on the other side, so I need to divide by 2. And a equals 3. So my coordinate 3, negative 2 on an AB grid, or A is 3, B is negative 2, is the solution to this system. So now we're in our second example. And first of all, if this just says solve, I could use any method I like. Let's say I don't like graphing or I don't have graph paper, so I'm going to look to substitution or elimination. I don't love substitution for this one because none of my variables have a 1 coefficient. So I'm going to do elimination. So I'm going to choose my y's this time. The reason I'm choosing the y's, 2 and 3 are smaller than 6 and 4. So I'm going to multiply and end up with smaller numbers. So if I times this one by 3 and this one by 2, I get, remember, multiply each piece by 3. 6x times 3 is 18x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6y. 3 times 21 is 63. 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times 3y is 6y. 2 times 1 is 2. So step 1 is done. I have made it so that I have the same coefficient for my y's. Now, what I need to do is add or subtract. Because my y's are the same coefficient, if they have different signs, I add. So 18 and 8 is 26x. Negative 6 plus 6 is gone. And 63 plus 2 is 65. So now what we need to do is we need to get this x alone. So I'm going to divide both sides by 26. And I get x equals 65 over 26. And here's where a lot of students might panic. They might think, this is not a number that I'm used to seeing. This isn't nice. Well, sometimes numbers don't always look great. Um, don't discriminate. It's still a number, too. If you reduce the fraction, these both divide by 13, and it is 5 over 2. So x equals 5 over 2 is, 5 over 2 is our value for x. So now, step 3, substitute the value 5 over 2 into x. So 4. 5 over 2 takes the x's spot, plus 3y equals 1. So now, to multiply fractions, you multiply the tops. 4 times 20, sorry, 4 times 5 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Now I need to get my y alone, so I'm going to subtract. Oh, sorry, I want that to look like a subtract. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. So I get 3y equals negative 9 divide by 3, and y equals negative 3. So my answer is the coordinate, 5 over 2 is my x, negative 3 is my y. Okay, so again, if you get a fraction, that's okay, just work with it, it is a number. And if you're really concerned about doing a whole bunch of work and not having it right, check the back of the book when you get to here and see, is that at least one of my answers, and then you can continue from there. So your assignment today is page 437, and you're doing questions just number 3 and 6 AC as practice for this, and then I'll have some more um, activity questions in class for you to work on and practice. Okay, good luck. Stay classy, math class.